أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم All praises and thanks be to Allah the Lord of the heavens and the earth Alhamdulillah all praises are to Allah alone for having brought us here together to end the Islamic session to enable us to learn his deen and to enlighten our iman with the knowledge that we seek from those who are learned among us whom Allah has chosen for his cause before we commence this lecture, I would like to introduce our dearest Chef to all of you. Chef Asim al-Hakim is well known and a prominent international English speaker on Islam. He is a Saudi national and resides in this beautiful city of Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. He attained his BA in Linguistics from King Abdulaziz University in Jeddah in 1987 and later earned his higher diploma in Islamic studies from Umar Qura University in Mecca. Sheikh Asim al Hakim is, is active in delivering Islamic programs for various broadcast channels on radio, television, podcast, and internet in both Arabic and English languages. He is a regular contributor to several Islamic programs presenting at Saudi Radio Channel, Saudi Second Channel, Huda Channel, Al Majd. Iqra channel and numerous lectures on Peace TV which has more than a hundred million viewers worldwide. Also he has been delivering Friday Qutbah since 1989 and delivers three weekly lectures on different Islamic books. He has been one of the prime speakers at the Dubai International Peace Convention that is organized under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Vice President and Prime Minister of UE and ruler of Dubai, and has participated in a number of conferences in India and the United Kingdom. Sheikh Asim travels often to Europe, Asia, and Middle East for delivering Islamic lectures by invitation by local and international organizations. We ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to provide him with more success, inshallah, and accept from him all his noble contributions to Islam and humanity. I would like to take this beautiful opportunity to invite Sheikh Asim al Hakim to enlighten us on this beautiful topic on this evening, welcoming the blessed month of Ramadan. Sheikh Asim al Hakim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah ya Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala mabrouthi rahmatan lil alameen. Nabiina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man ihtada bi hadihi wa sallam sunnahihi ila yawm al-dini amma ba'd As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh After hearing this introduction, I almost believed it Oh Allah, mashallah, who is he talking about? Ya akhi, all of this is in vain unless Allah Azza wa Jal gives you sincerity and 
makes it solely for his sake. And that is why I always tell the brothers, don't exaggerate in introducing so much about the speaker because this doesn't yani, add value and it takes about five minutes of your time. Welcoming Ramadan is a topic that most of what you are going to hear is well known to you. But likewise, all what we hear from the Quran and all what we hear from the Sunnah, then why do we often repeat it over and over again? Because it's a reminder. And reminding benefits only those who believe, which means that those who do not believe, those whom Allah does not intend them to go to where it pleases Him and He does not want good for them, they will not remember. Now, an introduction. Why did Allah create us? To get married, to have a good job, and to have children? Definitely not. Allah Azza did not create the jinn and the ins except for one purpose and one purpose alone, and that is to worship Him. And it is the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal that He gave us seasons that we gain a lot of reward, get closer to Allah Azza wa Jal, and elevate our status in paradise through these seasons. Usually, in Europe and America, they have the Christmas season. This is when everyone goes to the market and buy discounted products. And you can see people queuing for a day or two or three under the sun, under the rain, just trying to get the best deal. We Muslims have many seasons. We have Ashura, we have Arafah, we have Hajj, and one of the greatest seasons is the season of Ramadan. And this is why Allah says to His Prophet وسلم, So worship Allah till you die. There is no break for us. We have holidays for the summer, we have spring break, we have uh, uh, school vacations, and we will leave in, for a Muslim, we don't have this. Five times a day you have to pray. Do you have a break? Some say, yes, Sheikh, when I'm fainting and I'm dying out of cancer and I'm not uh, conscious, I have a break. Okay, you're not having a break, you're having a break now. You're dying. No, alhamdulillah, and, and, and we do not see, this is one of the greatest blessings of Allah, that we do not see these rituals and forms of worship as a burden, do we? Come on, don't lie. The majority of Muslims think of it as a burden. So, ya Allah, Akbar, tomorrow's Ramadan. What's wrong? Ya Akhi, thirst and hunger. And not only that, I cannot listen to music in my car. I cannot watch movies. What is this? I'm, I'm, I'm suffocating. I'm dying. So, it is difficult. You have to wake up at Fajr. Fajr? Ya Akhi, Fajr is 4.15. And I just slept three hours ago. And I, I have work at 7.30. It's, it's not logical. You have to refrain from haram. You have to. All of these are burdens to those who are not blessed by Allah. Those whom Allah blesses, they will find everything easy going. And that is why the Prophet said, From this dunya, it was made beloved to me perfume and women. And my satisfaction and tranquility is only allocated and found in. In salah, in prayer. Yani if you have worries, if you have debts, if you have problem with your wife, what to do? Shaykh Allah, I listen to rock and roll music. I forget. The other one, what do you do? I go to the gym and I start boxing and hitting the, the, the punching bag until I'm torn out. Others, the Prophet, what did he used to do? He used to pray. Once you pray, khalas. Everything off your shoulders. It's at Allah's disposal, and He does what He wills, subhanahu azza wa jal. So, when we want to achieve the best in this season, in this blessed month, how do we do that? We have to, first of all, acknowledge the beauty of this month. What beauty, Shaykh? The temperature is 50 degrees here. Alhamdulillah, it is hot, it is humid. You pray in the masjid, people, next you smell. MashaAllah, I haven't showered for six weeks maybe. Or, uh, it's very bad. 
Not only that, they had eaten bake for sahur. So it Fajr said, Ameen, and the garlic is out. The Imam is even fainting from the smell, na'udhu billah. What is this? No, it is a blessed month. Always look at the positive side. Don't be so sarcastic and thinking that everything is the end of the world. Life is beautiful, depending on how you look at it. This beautiful month of Ramadan is known as the month of the Qur'an. Why? Because the Qur'an was initially revealed in it. So it's a month of the Qur'an. Not only that, it is the month of all scriptures. Imagine that. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu was salam, the scriptures of Ibrahim were revealed. What is it called in the Quran? The scriptures of Ibrahim. What's his name? Huh? Sohafi? Ibrahim. And it was revealed on the first day of Ramadan. The Prophet said, والسلام, the Torah, which is revealed to Musa, peace be upon him, was revealed on the sixth day of Ramadan, which is the seventh night. So it's all even, uh, uh, all numbers. The Injil, known as the uh, New Testament nowadays, they call it, was revealed to the third, on the 13th. And the Zabur, which was given to Dawood, peace be upon him, was revealed on the 18th day of Ramadan, and the Quran was revealed on the 24th of Ramadan. So this sacred month is not only for the Muslims, it's been there since Allah created the heavens and the earth. And it is favored and blessed by Allah Azza wa Jal. The Quran was revealed in Ramadan. The Prophet used to revise the Quran with Jibreel every single Ramadan. Once. Except in the last year before he died, he revised it twice. The Prophet said alayhi salatu was salam, the people of the Quran, those who read it, ponder upon it, study it, are the people of Allah and His private and personal people, the closest to Allah Azza wa Jal. And it's an honor and a privilege to claim that I am among the people of Allah Azza wa Jal. But if you don't know the difference between an ayah and a hadith, I was speaking with a gentleman, Sami, a liberal, secular, everything you want to say bad about him, Shaykh, don't bite bite. Well, Ramadan is tomorrow. Yeah, I'm not bite biting. You don't learn it. So I can say whatever I want. Huh? If he sees it, he's going to be angry. But I definitely know. And he will not see it unless it's on NBC. But Alhamdulillah, I don't think this is going to be on NBC. Okay, very good. Uh, so I was talking with him and discussing a few things and he said, Ya Akhi Allah, the Almighty says, Inna man a'malu bin niyad, verily deeds are by intention. And I said, excuse me? Allah said that? He said, yes, in the Quran. Allah, Ya Akhi, to my knowledge, this wasn't revealed in the Quran. He said, wasn't it? I remember studying it in the Quran. He said, Ya Akhi, this is hadith of the Prophet, Umar ibn Khattab's hadith. He said, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, where were we? Said Khair. After that, and you want us to continue? Yeah. You don't know your heads from your toes. And you want to speak in Allah's religion without knowledge? This is a manifestation of the Muslims nowadays. You tell them and talk to them about the Quran. How many surahs do you memorize? Ah, uh, three big surahs, Shaykh. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, qul a'udhu al-Qur'an, qul a'udhu bil-Nas. Masha Allah, tabarakallah. What is the meaning of Sharri Ghasiq al-Ida Baqab? Um, I didn't reach that ayah yet. And I've been trying since six years and studying it, but inshallah I'm coming to this ayah. They don't know the Quran. So we have a big problem. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran and the Messenger will say, will complain to Allah, Oh my Lord, verily my people deserted this Quran. Have we deserted the Quran? Yes. How do we desert the Quran? Either. We desert it that we do not listen to it or believe in it. This is kufr if you don't believe in it. But we believe in it, but I don't want to listen. I don't want to read it. And the majority of Muslims have this in them. There are a better category, and that is those who recite it and read it, but they do not act upon it. You always see them in the masjid, mashallah, reading it, and then kissing it, and putting it in one eye, and putting it in another eye, and putting it on their head. And then uh, I don't know what else they can do on it, yani, subhanAllah. And this is one of the weirdest thing around. People hold the Quran, 
they kiss it. And it's not part of the sunnah. The only thing that can be kissed is the hajar al-aswad, the black stone. Ya akhi ma'alaih, some scholars say you can kiss it. Khalas, kiss it ma'alaih, no problem. The problem is that they prostrate on it. So, mm, mm. so what is this prostration? They say this is a mindless prostration. MashaAllah, this is you in fiqh. I've been studying fiqh for so long. What is the minor prostration? So this is you do if you find food or a piece of bread on the floor, you do it and you prefer to do it three times. Yeah, what are you getting this new religion from? And this is 1990, mashallah, or, or something like that. This is all fabrication. But this is their relationship with the Quran. We read it, we listen to it, but we do not apply it. I'm working in a bank and I'm using riba. I'm working in a, a, a media and I broadcast um, movies and so on. I, I'm a DJ, but I listen to the Quran. Shah Rukh Khan is a very, mashallah, a good listener to the Quran, but yeah, no problem, he can do uh, Bollywood movies. This shows you that they have deserted the Quran. There are people who read it, know what it means, and implement it, but they do not ponder upon it. This is a high level. To ponder upon the verses of Allah, what does Allah want from us? So you try your level best to dig and deep into the meanings of the beautiful Quran, and the more you dig in, the more you get closer to Allah. And that is why you find people reading the Quran, and it has an impact on them, and some people has no impact, but they're blessed as well. The fourth level, which is a high level, is to read it, ponder upon it, and to apply it, but also to seek its cure. Allah Azza wa described the Quran to be cure for our chests, is it? If your son is sick, what is the first thing you do? Give him temper, antibiotics, <laughs> take him to the doctor. And afterwards, then do ruqyah. Maybe it works. No, a proper Muslim has trust in Allah Azza wa The first thing I do, I give ruqyah to my child. Seven times of fatra. Likewise, at the kursi, make some dua, then take him to the hospital. But believing that Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who provides the cure and the Quran is the best cure on earth for your physical, for physical, yes, and also for your mental illnesses. And finally, part of deserting the Quran is when you apply it, but you do not refute to it. You do not go to it. If I have a dispute, let the Quran judge. Say, so, no, 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 I'd like to go to the labor office. They give me more. Yeah, yeah we have the Quran. So, no, no, I, I need some, a little bit extra. This is a big pro problem. Therefore, if you want to attain Allah's love in this blessed month, would you like Allah to love you? Would you want the Prophet to love you? The Prophet said, alayhi salatu in the authentic hadith, whoever wants Allah Azza wa Jal to love him and the Prophet sallallahu to love him, he must read the Quran. Simple, hadith, authentic hadith. Maybe the first time you hear it. Usually, I try to my level best to bring you, you know, the things that you have not heard so that it would energize you a little bit. Read the Quran. It is a shame that when you go five days, like today, go to the masjid, look into the books, the Qur'ans, and you find a lot of dust on them. Come the first week of Ramadan, they're sparkling, mashallah, everybody's reading it. After Ramadan is over, halas. And you ask the people, Hafi, how many juice of the Qur'an do you read per day? He said, Allah, only in Ramadan. And have you finished it in Ramadan? He said, I started three years ago, but I could not complete it. This year, inshallah, I will complete it after three years. Of, I, mean, I know where I stopped. Yeah, is, is he a proper Muslim who does not have a connection, or does not have a relationship with the Quran? No. He is going astray. He would watch the news, he would read the newspaper, he would read everything about everything, but not read the Quran. Among the things of welcoming Ramadan, is to learn about the virtues of fasting. Because what is Ramadan? It's fasting. So we all know fasting. And the, I, I, the, the problem is, Muslims are divided. Some of them have already a habit of fasting. Some of us are blessed to fast Mondays and Thursdays and the white days and mashallah. They have a connection with fasting, so it's, it's easy for them. 
They have a connection with night prayer. They have a connection with all those good deeds. When Ramadan comes, if what they have been doing was not for the sake of Allah, but rather for the sake of habit, they would not feel any difference. So they will continue to fast and pray and read them. What's new? But those who do it for the sake of Allah, it becomes a season, a challenge for them. So they double, quad, uh, triple and quadruple their efforts to get closer to Allah because they know they have 30 days, they have to make the best of these 30 days. The Prophet said, والسلام, fasting and the Quran, they will intercede for the servant of Allah on the day of judgment. The fasting would come and say, Oh Allah, I prevented him from eating and drinking. And Quran would come and say, Oh Allah, I prevented him from sleeping. So Allah would accept the intercession and he would enter Jannah. Fasting and the Quran. So now you have to prepare yourself. Do I have someone to intercede? Do I have something to intercede for me on the day of judgment or not? The Prophet says, والسلام, whoever fasts one day in the cause of Allah, Allah would prevent his face from seeing hellfire for 70 years. Yeah, you'll be as far as 70 years travel distance from hellfire. If you have fast, how many days? One day. One day. What about those who fast 30 days of Ramadan? Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. The Prophet says, والسلام, whoever fasts Ramadan, believing in it, and anticipating for the reward, Allah will forgive all of his previous sins. So he said, from Ramadan to Ramadan is forgiveness. From prayer to prayer is forgiveness. Allah wants to forgive you. But we don't want Allah to forgive us, unfortunately. We're so arrogant. We're so sure and confident of what we do. We fail to see what Allah Azza wa wants from us. But is fasting only refraining from drinking and, and, and eating? The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, fasting does not just mean abstaining from eating and drinking, rather fasting means abstaining from idle and obscene talk. Then you have to hold your tongue, you have to zip it. Alas, in Ramadan, can you do that? Wallahi Shaykh, we cannot eat, we cannot drink, we cannot smoke during working hours. And you don't want us to gossip? I have to talk to my friend about my manager, my colleague, my wife, did this, my neighbor. Oh, this is any fruit. It's okay. No, it's not okay. Because if you do not refrain from haram and from evil talk, Allah is not in need for you to prevent yourself from eating and drinking. This is more important for you. Welcoming Ramadan. How to welcome Ramadan? What is one of the prominent things of Ramadan that everybody knows at night time? Salatul Taraweeh. Everyone knows, even the disbelievers, the non-Muslims, they're shocked. What makes the people leave their homes, leave their hobbies, leave everything and go to the masjid for an hour or an hour and a half to pray every single night? Unbelievable. What are they doing? They're praying. Why? Because they are show their gratitude to Allah. But they're crying. Why are they crying? Are they terrorists? Did they kill people? No. Because they have their sins. And then when they sit, they start to scrutinize a Muslim's style, a lifestyle, they find, oh, this is problematic. The guy is honest, he comes on time, leaves on time, does not cheat, very kind to his family, very kind to his kids, he uh, obeys his parents, he connects it to his kinship. This guy is Mr. Perfect. And truly speaking, Muslims are Mr. Perfect. A true Muslim is a Mr. Perfect. You want to check me or I want to check you, I go and ask your family. How is X, Y, Z? He said, well, uh, he beats us in the morning and the evening. Then this is not a practicing Muslim. How, ask the neighbors. How does he treat you? Allah, mashallah, the smile is from here and there. Whenever we need him, he always there to help us. Ask the guests. When they come, do you open the door or you look from the, you know, uh, I say, well, I'm not here, then I'm not here. I keep, they want dinner and uh, I'm not going to give them. So, Mr. Muslim is Mr. Perfect because he is complying. So, when you go to Taraweeh, what's so special about it? Ah, there is a very big special thing for us as Muslims. You want forgiveness? The Prophet said, whoever 
prays night prayer of Taraweeh, Allah would forgive his previous sins, providing he does that believing and anticipating for the reward. All my previous sins, all your previous sins, major and minor, it's an issue of dispute. Don't be greedy. Huh? Minor and major, you have to repent. No, 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 I don't want to repent. I want Allah to forgive me because it, I mean, obviously I have to go to, you know, UK and have fun and party and play. No, no, sorry. Major sins, you have to repent. Oof, there'll be a lot of repent. Khalas, Allah will forgive So Allah will forgive you if you pray night prayer the whole month of Ramadan. 29 or 30 nights from Isha till Fajr. Pray night prayer, Allah will forgive your sins. But this is a little bit too much. I mean, seven hours praying, eight hours praying from Isha to Fajr. I can't do this. The Prophet used to do it, and his prayer used to make his feet swollen because of the length of his prayer. The companions of the Prophet used to do the same, pray the whole night. Abu Hanifa, may Allah have mercy on his soul, it was reported that he used to finish reciting the Quran 60 times in Ramadan. And how many times a day? Twice. Finish the Quran, <laughs> read it from the beginning to the end, twice. Every single day, Abu al-Shafi was reported the same. So how much do you pray? Yeah, crazy. What is this? Too, too much, I cannot do this, I'm human. I'm not Superman. Well, the Prophet gave you a salam discount. Look at this beautiful religion. The Prophet said, that whoever prays with the Imam, until he concludes his prayer, this is accounted and considered to be the prayer of the whole night. So if your Imam prays for 40 minutes, what's the longest Imam prays here? I know, I know people, especially Aziziyya, mashallah, here. It's very famous, like, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. in two rakhats. And the people say, this is too long. What is this? يعني 40 minutes, 50 minutes الحرم an hour and a half Allah will write to you as if you have prayed the whole night from Isha to Fajr and if you add to that Fajr prayer in congregation this is the whole night again and for 30 nights Allah will forgive your sins so you don't care, we don't care when Laylatul Qadr is because we're definitely Praying it as long as we do not mess any night, if it's the 21st, if it's the 25th or the 29th, it doesn't matter to us. Shahar Ramadan, the month of Ramadan, is the month of charity. Now, you remember the hadith, Ibn Abbas, now we're pleased with him and with his father, said that the Prophet والسلام, used to be as generous as the wind. You know, when the wind comes, it comes everywhere. So he was as generous as the wind. And the most generous of his times would be in Ramadan when Jibreel revised the Quran with him. Why? Scholars say because the Quran tells you to believe, tells you to have trust in Allah Azza wa Jal. So if I tell you, Akhi, who is your provider? Who provides for you? What would you say? Ah, my manager. He writes the paycheck. Who, who provides for you? Do you have any doubts? Abedin, do we have any doubts? At all, definitely. No one provides for us except Allah. Yalla, give me 1,000 riyals. I need charity to our refugee brothers in, in Syria. Uh, yes, but you know, I have this, you know, eight gifts and I have to buy dates and I'm going shopping. Inshallah, inshallah. Here's five riyals. So it, con it conflicts with what actually you think you believe. When you read the Quran, this becomes a realization when you give for charity. And that is why the Prophet said, Burhan. Burhan means evidence. So charity is evidence. Evidence on what? On your belief. That you believe that Allah Azza wa Jal is the provider. The Prophet said, والسلام, fasting is a protection. And charity extinguishes sin like water is extinguished, uh, extinguishes the fire. Charity extinguishes your sins. So the more you have sins, you saw a movie, you heard a, a song, and you saw Allah's forgiveness. What to do? Yeah, I give five reals, give ten reals, give in charity. This expedites a lot of your sins. Imam Shafi'i says, I'd love a man to give 
generously in Ramadan as the Prophet used to do. Because people are in more need in Ramadan. Because they're tired, they're unable to uh, gain money, maybe work or so. And the Prophet said, whoever feeds a, a person who's fasting, and he breaks his fast, that doesn't mean you come in the Duhr time and tell him complete eat. No, this is not what is intended. Huh? What's intended is after Maghrib, you give him fatur, you give him something to break his fast days, the Prophet says, he has the same reward. And I know people, I know families, Allah, that with the grace of Allah, mashallah, they start up a sheep every single night. This is like you're talking about 1600 riyals, huh? With rice, and they take it to the masjid and the people, and no one knows who they are. If I would do something like this, I would put a book poster. Sheikh Hassan invited you tonight for dinner, you and you who love. And I would take a photo of you so that I would hold it and for six, seven years that, listen, I gave you food. But these people do it for the sake of Allah. Every single night. How much is it, are they paying? Just to feed the poor for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Now, being generous in Ramadan is our Muslims' characteristic. But this does not limit our generosity, is not limited only to giving money, but also to preaching. So if you have knowledge, you utilize, for me it's, it's alhamdulillah, it's much and easier and more convenient than spending money. Ah, I just teach. Alhamdulillah, you guys I don't, can't teach, you have to pay. So I, with the grace of Allah, try my level best to teach, to answer questions, to do this, to do that. It's a season, we have to work. So it's not limited, your generosity is not limited only to paying money, rather than there is your generosity with knowledge, your generosity with being forgiving and pardoning people. This is a form of generosity. Now, the Prophet said, Allah only has mercy on those who are merciful. How are you? I'm fine, No, no, I'm just asking you. How are you? Are you among the merciful? Uh, yes, Sheikh, I'm very kind, I'm very caring, I'm very loving. Do you pardon and forgive those who make mistakes towards you? Um, yes. If I ask the people in the masjid, Wallah, Sheikh, every single day he fights with us. Putting his foot on my foot, and if I go away, he catches me from the neck. If my mobile goes by mistake, he shouts in the masjid. SubhanAllah, what about your family? How is your wife complaining from you? Yeah, she's crazy. Okay, what about your children? Oh, they're disobedient. How about your father and mother? They're old, nagging all the time. And then, then all these people are wrong and you are Mawla, mashallah, the most kind and forgiving and... No, it is you, Akhi, who needs to be fine-tuned. You know, you know Mustah ibn Athafa? Do you know him? The name? He's the cousin of Abu Bakr. You know Abu Bakr, of course. Please, yeah. And don't, don't make me disappointed. <laughs> I was in London once and I was talking about a companion of the Prophet and I said, Do you know Salam al Akwa? What? What? Who's Salama? Who's Salama? Who's Salama? Male or female? So you don't know the man? He's one of the biggest and strongest athletes of the companions. A marathon runner. You don't know him? He said, No. And I asked him about two or three other companions. He said, You know, big, big audience, mashallah. So I said, Akwa, my brothers and sisters, if you go to Jannah and they tell you this is Salam al Akwa, I said, nice meeting you, don't know him. And this is Talha, and this is Ubaidullah, this is Zubair, this is Sa'ad ibn Abi Malik, this is so. You guys, who is this? I don't know, Abu Bakr, Umar, Rahman, and Ali. And, 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 and I don't know these guys. I don't know the majority in here. Take me to hell, let me see. You go to hell, MashaAllah, MashaAllah. I know everyone here. This guy, I heard him, he was on the top 10, and this is the best actress, and this is the... We have a problem. We have to, we're going to Jannah, inshallah. So we have to start learning about our neighbors and those who want, we want to be with. So Masbah ibn Athafa was one of the first to migrate to Medina. And Shaytan trapped him. So he was one among the three companions of the Prophet who slandered Mother Aisha. Who are the three companions? Masbah, of course, you know. I just said his name. Two. Hamna. Her name is Hamna. Bin Jash. Who is she? The sister in law of the Prophet and his cousin. 
her, her, her sister is Zainab, the, uh, the mother of the believer. The third one was the poet of the Prophet ﷺ, who was? Hmm. Do, we, do we know the poets of the Prophet ﷺ? There, there were three poets, Abdullah ibn Rawaha, Sa'ad ibn uh, Malik, uh, Ka'b ibn Malik, and the third one, Hassan ibn Thabit, one of the greatest poets of the Prophet, and he was among the three. So Abu, Huraid, uh, Abu Bakr used to give his cousin Masrah money every week because he was the, the poorest among the companions and he was a migrant, one of the Muhajirin. When he slandered his daughter, he was outraged. Does he have the right to be outraged? My cousin slanders my daughter who happens to be the wife of the Prophet and I'm the one who's giving him money. What is the normal thing to do? To run him over with your car. Yeah, this is the least you can do. But alhamdulillah, they didn't have cars at the time. So he said, I will not give him a single penny. Then Allah revealed a verse from the Quran. And Allah says, Shaytan, uh, and Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, says in it, and let not those among you who are blessed with graces and wealth, this is a bukkah, let them not swear not to give any sort of help to their kinsmen al masakin the poor and those who left their homes for Allah's cause let them pardon and forgive do you not love Allah to forgive you? so this was addressed to whom? Abu Bakr so the Prophet said did you hear what Allah said to you? and he recited this ayah what was the natural thing from Abu Bakr to do? Allah is telling him, he's addressing him. Let uh, them pardon and forgive. Do you not love that Allah should forgive you? And he said, by Allah, I love Allah to forgive me. I make you my witness, O Prophet of Allah, that I will continue till the day I die to give him allowance. And I have forgiven him and pardoned him. End of story. Now, compare apple to apple. How do you treat your wife? She, she's crazy. She's nagging. She's giving me problems. You have no excuse. If she was loving and caring and, and, and a, a sweetheart, then who will you forgive and pardon? We all forgive and pardon those that are good with us. When we are put to the test, then this is what you should ask Allah Azza wa Jal to uh, 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 help you and to give you the power to forgive and to give. Giving, being generous, is one of the characteristics of the month of Ramadan. Allah Azza wa says, Shaytan threatens you with poverty and orders you to commit fahisha, whereas Allah promises you forgiveness from Him and bounty. So, you should try your level best to invest your money. If I tell you, give me 10,000 riyals, and every month I will give you 4,000 riyals, would you give me? It's a good investment. 4,000 meaning two months and a half, the capital is back. Well, Allah Azza wa gives you more. Every riyal, 10 riyals, up to 700 riyals. And Allah increases whatever He will, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, invest your money in Ramadan. Give in charity, knowing that Allah doubles and triples and gives you more than what you had given. It is the month of forgiveness, as stated before. Allah Azza wa Jal forgives in Ramadan, scores of people, much more than anywhere else. Aisha said, may Allah be pleased with her, if I were to attain the night of decree, Laylat al-Qadr, what should I say? He said, say, Allahumma innaka afuun tuhibbu al-afwa fa'fu anni. Three words, oh Allah, you are afu, most forgiving, most uh, merciful. And you love pardoning and forgiveness. So have your forgiveness on me and pardon me. Very easy. So if you want Allah Azza wa to forgive you, you have to begin to forgive others. You have to cleanse your heart and wash it with zamzam so that it is clean for everyone. Yes, but this brother in, in, at work did something wrong to me. Forgive me. Yeah, but my neighbor did this and that. Forgive him. We unfortunately are filled with rage, with anger, with hatred. To me personally, if someone parks in front of my house, I get my blood pressure up the ceiling. 
And I think, hmm, should I flat tire, is tires a four or three only? Or should I put a, need, a, 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 a nail because he would not see it and then, or should I break his window? What to do, what to do? Well, I spent like two days just thinking what to do to him. Why is that? Yeah, where is your forgiveness? Where is it? Yeah, sure, he parked his car under my tree. The shade I'm waiting for since Allah knows when. This is my shade. It is my tree. Yeah, let it go. How many times do you make mistakes to others? Tens of mistakes a day. Would you like everyone to hold you accountable? No. Everybody shall forgive, forgives me. So why don't you forgive others? So it is among the best uh, months of the year for you to uh, forgive. Uh, finally, welcoming Ramadan is very easy thing to say. But walking the talk is very difficult. This is something that you have to train yourself. You have to condition yourself to begin and to acknowledge the beauty of Ramadan. Ramadan is a month of sincerity. Does anyone know if I'm fasting tomorrow or not? If it's Ramadan, nobody knows. Yeah, look at the child. He goes and makes wudu. It's hot. And he puts water in his mouth for wudu. And he spits it out. What happens if he swallows it? Who knows? No one. Look at that woman sitting four or five hours in the kitchen doing food for her husband and her children. And she tastes the food, of course, which is permissible without swallowing. What prevents her from swallowing? I travel sometimes from here to Medina, from here to Yambur, during Ramadan, on the daytime. And I find this worshiper at the sun praying, and he's fasting. Yeah, who would know if you pray or not? Who would know if you fast or not? Only Allah Azza wa So it increases watching Allah Azza wa in your heart. And that is why the more you fast, the more fearful of Allah Azza wa I know a brother who fasts Mondays and Thursdays. And he's happy of doing this. And I say, yeah, why are you so happy? He said, Sheikh, every time I get into the car, when it's not Monday or Thursday, I listen to music. But when I'm fasting, I don't listen to music. And as weeks come by, I'm so used to fasting that it is Tuesday, I'm not fasting, and I want to listen to music, but I don't put it on Quran. And after five minutes, hey, I'm not fasting. Why am I listening to Quran? But then I say, look, khalas. I can't now change from Quran to music. And I continue to do this until Allah Azza wa cured me from listening to music. Look at the beauty of fasting because it teaches you to know that Allah watches you. And once you do this, you will attain the fearness of Allah. You will start to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will have this submissiveness and you have to acknowledge the fact that the Lord of the daytime in Ramadan is the Lord of the nighttime. So to prepare yourself for Ramadan, you have to plan. Because in management, they say if you don't have a plan, you will reach nowhere very soon. You will reach nowhere, but very soon. Imagine you going out from your home at 7 o'clock, your car is filled with fuel, and you have food with you, you're destined, mashallah, ready, car is maintained, and you drive. Where are you going to? I don't know. But I will reach there, inshallah, I have enough fuel. You will not reach anywhere. But what are you going to do this Ramadan? You have to start systematically. A lot of the brothers, the first three, four nights of Ramadan, MashaAllah, Taraweeh, on the dot, Salah, Quran, fifth day, Khalas, they're tired. Taraweeh, I prayed for Raka'ah, but my back hurts me and my knees, I have to go. Tayyib, Fajr prayer, Wallah, I had so much for Sakur. You know, I tried to make Rukur, but I had to throw up, so I, I left Salah. So I'm at Tayyib Maghrib. Wallahi, I came from Asr, you know, tired, that I couldn't say, pray Asr, I slept until uh, Maghrib, when I put the food, I remember the hadith of the Prophet, when the food is served, and the prayer is called for, begin with the food. But begin with the food, but the table is too big. So I had to eat and eat and eat, and then they brought Umali, and Basbusa, and, the, and we have to switch, and then the, 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 the Subhanallah, Isha prayer, and he's still eating, mashallah, consuming like a wild beast. No. You have to plan. 
how much are you going to read from the Quran every day and try to make it fixed. How many salah in the masjid in the first row are you going to inshallah attain? Because it's not enough to say, I will pray in the masjid. If you pray in the masjid, you will lose one rak'ah, two rak'ah, sometimes you will lose the prayer. But if you put your objective, your benchmark, that I pray in the first row, the whole five prayers of the day, then if you are a little bit late, you lose the first takbir, but not the rak'ah. And that is why the Prophet said, and start from tonight, inshallah, whoever attains the first takbir in jama'ah, for 40 nights, and how many prayers? Huh? 200. 40 multiplies by 5, 200 salah. If you, for 200 continuous prayer, attain the first takbir, not the first row. Yeah, the Imam says, Allahu Akbar, and you're in the row, saying Allahu Akbar. Allah would write for you two uh, exemptions. One from hypocrisy, and the other is from hellfire. You will not enter hell, and you will not be a hypocrite. I tried this for maybe six years. I finished 30 days, 35 days. Once I reached 39 days, and I missed it. I divorced my wife. No, 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 I'm just kidding. I didn't divorce my wife. It, it is difficult. But wallahi, once you get it, you feel good. Now, you give it a try. Ramadan is there. Unfortunately, you're going to see that the first day of Ramadan, I'm in work, inshallah, I will go, do her prayer, you reach the masjid, they're finished prayer. What about the sunnah prayer? Would you like a house in Al-Hamra or on the Karnish, here, a big mansion, a big villa? Who doesn't like that? Everybody likes that. How about to have one in Jannah? <coughs> Jannah is more better, Taman. Pray 12 rakahs a day, two before Fajr, four before Dhuhr. Two after Dhuhr, two after Maghrib, two after Aisha, khalas. Allah will build your house in Jannah. So try to maintain this also. The best thing for you to do is to refrain from haram. Akhi, the, the worst evil we have is in our bedrooms. My wife? No, no, other than that. Uh, the worst evil you have is the TV set. TV is the worst evil in your house. So, Shaykh, I watch only Huda TV and Peace TV. MashaAllah, Barakallah. How many hours? Uh, half an hour a day. I watch your show every Saturday. Okay, what, what about the rest of the week? Yeah, sure. You know, Star TV, we have this TV, we have that TV. And it's all music, and it's all uh, uh, acting. And, and this corrupts the heart. It destroys your heart. So that is why when the, you pray in the masjid, you don't have any taste for salah. You don't have any taste for... Everybody's crying. One of the brothers came to me and said, oh, yes. Last night, something very funny happened. Said, what happened? He said, we were praying in Taraweeh. The two guys next to me were crying and sobbing. And the one in front of me and the one behind me, the Imam, everybody was crying. I don't know. I felt like I was praying in a jail or something. Maybe some, they killed someone or committed a crime. And the poor thing, he's shocked by the people crying and he's the only one who's not crying because he does not know Allah. What crime did our Prophet do What sin did our Prophet do Yet never ever he prayed without crying and sobbing out of the fear of Allah Azza wa Jal. So you know Allah better than him. Or you are free of sin more than him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you have to try your level best to go back to track Welcome this month of Ramadan. Pray to Allah that He gives you the support to fast it, to pray Tarawih prayer, to be away from sin, and Allah Azza wa Jal will answer your prayer if you are sincere. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that He makes us and you among those who fast and pray and give in charity until they attain and reach the highest levels of paradise with our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wallahu a'lam wa nisbatu ilmi alayhi wa sallam
May Allah reward the Sheikh Hassan for this lecture and also may Allah reward you for attending this lecture. And uh, I ask Allah to me that we be uh, from those who listen to the righteous word and we will we be follower for these righteous words. Uh, brother, this Dawah Center in Azizia is the first Dawah Center in Jeddah. And they have good activities for uh, Jariyat, for non uh, speaking Arabic uh, brothers. There are uh, lessons uh, every Friday for uh, in Urdu language and uh, I think in Habashi language also and uh, also in uh, uh, I think Sri Lanka also. Uh, also there is uh, the time from 9.30 uh, to 2.30 uh, in the afternoon every Jum'ah. Uh, also, uh, there is in Ramadan, it will be only the lectures or the lessons only for those uh, Tagalog uh, speakers. Uh, there is no lessons for in Urdu because the da'i will be distributed among the mosques uh, in Jeddah. Uh, after Ramadan, inshallah, we, the, it will be conducted, uh, the, the lessons will be conducted uh, again, inshallah. So this is just to remind you that this day was also for you, not only for Arabs. Okay? Is that normal?
it has been broken by traveling or illness. So if you fast 30 days in a row, the first night is enough. If you sleep and wake up in the other, uh, uh, the fifth or the sixth day, uh, and say, oh, I did not have support, it is sufficient. But if you travel and you break your fast and you come back, so you have to initiate a new niya for that. We'll have a next question from the sister's side. Any questions from the sister's side? for them such as the Prophet said whoever prays Fajr in the Masjid and he remains where he has uh, been standing and, and remembering Allah Azzawajal till sunrise and he prays two rak'ahs uh, Salat al ishraq then this would be equivalent to Umrah and Hajj perfect 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 now a woman praying in her house would not attain this ajr. Likewise, the Prophet said, whoever prays in the Masjid of Medina, this is equivalent to 1,000 prayers elsewhere. And whoever prays in the Masjid of Haram, Mecca, this is equivalent to 100,000 elsewhere. And we know that the woman is more recommended to pray in her home rather than in the Masjid of the Prophet or in the Haram. So the scholars say that she is exempted from following this but with the intention to get the reward if it were permissible for her to go or recommended for her to go, Allah would grant her the same reward as she is praying in her home. And all of the men would say, Ya yeah, Shaykh, I wish we had the same uh, 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 yani luxury. Imagine, yani my wife wants to go to the masjid, it's next door, she is allowed, I cannot prevent her. But I tell her, the Prophet ﷺ instructed you to pray in your home and he said that this is better than praying in the Masjid of Medina, of the Haram, in Mecca. So if you do this, if you pray home, believing that this is what the Prophet ﷺ instructed you and commanded you to do, Allah will give you more than what he gives the men, or equivalent at least, and Allah knows best. <laughs> May we have the next question from Brother Sai? Assalamu alaikum. My name is Adil Hassan. I am a mechanical engineer. Uh, could you please describe us the bare minimum requirements for an ideal? You know, if someone wants to go for an etikaf, mm. so what would be the bare minimum requirements for someone to undergo a perfect? You know, Allah, it, is, it requires a lecture. We, I, I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, I was talking about going to the masjid for 40 days and, and, and attaining the first takbir. I'm, I don't want to bet. Betting is haram, but I don't think we are going to get there for this. So we'll start fajr, inshallah, tomorrow. Um, Atikaf is seclusion to maintain and stay in the masjid for 10 nights, as the Prophet used to do. As during the last 10 nights of Ramadan. He made Atikaf in the first 10, then in the middle 10, and then he continued to do it in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. His wives also uh, uh, performed Atikaf uh, with him and his companions. Mm -hmm. And it's to go get into the masjid and stay there. The scholars say minimum of a day and night. Some scholars like Shafi says even one hour is enough. But let's be safe, one day and night is the minimum. The maximum is the 10 nights, you go there, after Maghrib of the last 10 nights and you stay there until Maghrib after uh, uh, when Eid is announced. What to do? You keep yourself in the masjid, make dhikr, read Quran, pray, stay away from mobile phones, from emails, from chit-chatting with the boys and, 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 and try to yani, cleanse your heart, your mind and to uh, get more reward as you can. You can go to the bathroom of course because uh, pampers are not allowed in the, in the haram, it's going to be difficult. You can wash, you can have a shower, you have to go out to eat, but yani, you don't go to uh, 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 something very far away from the masjid 
where you, you, you're staying in, but something local and come back, and the masjid has to have a Friday. So is it only isolated in three masjids, Medina, Mecca, and uh, Beit al-Maqdis? No. Any masjid that has a Friday, because you don't, would not have to go out. Can I go and visit a sick person or to follow a funeral? No. This is, uh, 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 is not, of course it's not mandatory. If you want to go, go. But then your ratikaf would be interrupted. So this is any mainly. We'll take the last question from the sister's side. Any questions from the sister's side? No questions. No questions. I will ask questions. They're, they're, putting, they're, put, they're putting gifts in front of me and they say we have to get rid of it. So, uh, what type is this watch? <laughs> My question, uh, what was the name of the marathon runner I mentioned in my lecture that people do not know his name? Who oh, raise your hand. Salam ibn al Akwa. That's good. Very good. What is the name of the sister of the Prophet's wife who slandered? Huh? Raise your hand, yeah, raise your hand. Zaylab. Bint? Yeah, I, I give him only the chisholm. Yalla. This is the one. Zaylab bint is bin Jash, but this is the wife. I should not, I should not take it. <laughs> I'm asking Ha Hamna. Who said Hamna? The brother there. Yalla, Atta. What is it? What is this? Zakhullah Khair. Uh, I would like to request the brothers to come with us so we can hand over to the volunteers who have been uh, working hard to make this program a success. I request those brothers to come on with us. Uh, Brother Mustafa, if he's here, Brother Mustafa, uh, Brother Nabil. Okay, uh, Brother Ajaz, uh, Abdullah, Aslam, <laughs> Mr. Salim, Brother Salim, Brother Tariq, Brother Wasim Moiz, Brother Hussein. Brother Jaffer, Brother Abdullah, and Mr.